Hi again YouTube, just a, another quick video on the CJ. Um, I don't know if you watched my last video but um, after doing my carburetor clean out um, a few days ago, uh, the Jeep um, run way way better, it's the original Carter carburetor in there. Um, I've only had the Jeep about two weeks so I'm still learning stuff, I, I don't really know much about this stuff and I'm not a mechanic. Um, but um, going back to my previous videos, if you saw the first video, I mentioned that it, it uh, had a dead battery and I had to put a new battery on it. Um, I did put the new battery on it, as you saw in the video, and um, it went flat overnight. So obviously um, there's some sort of parasitic drain on the Jeep. Um, I did the carburetor clean out knowing that. Um, it's running better after the carburetor clean, but it still had a slight misfire, so I thought my next job has got to be to find out what the parasitic drain is. Now, this is a old vehicle, it doesn't have the technology that a modern vehicle has. I don't have a um, amp meter or anything like that, so I thought I'd do this old school. So I got myself a 12 volt bulb that I had laying around. This is off a, it's a motorbike indicator bulb. Um, and run myself a couple of crocodile clips off it. Uh, I disconnected my earth terminal on the battery and just connected one side of this to the earth block on the battery and the other side to the earth terminal so the power or the negative basically was going through this and through the bulb and of course when I did it the bulb lit up because there is a power drain if the bulb wasn't lighting up there wouldn't be a power drain so I kind of had to go through the process then of what is causing this power drain so the first thing I did um, was pull the cable off of the clock my clock actually isn't working um, but I took the power cable off the back of the clock thinking well because the clock's broken maybe that's causing the problem Problem. Um, because I think that's more or less the only thing that I've got powered 24-7 in there. Um, it made no difference. So I went through the process of pulling every fuse out one at a time, putting it back and pull the fuse out, see if the light goes out, put the fuse back. Um, obviously if I pulled the fuse out that had the power drain then the light would go out. Went through all the fuses, absolutely nothing. The power drain did not stop and my light kept glowing so I, I kind of was pulling my hair out as you can see um, thinking well where do I go from here it's it's not anything that's on a fuse circuit so it's got to be something um, that's directly connected to the battery somehow so I started by going to the starter solenoid and thinking well what can I see that's wired off of this kind of directly and in this area um, I disconnected the alternator initially, took the wires off the alternator, that made absolutely no difference, so I reconnected them up and then I looked at um, the wires, I'm going to actually move the camera, I'm going to pause you here so I can take the camera off and show you which wire I looked at next. So the next wire I looked at, um, obviously I checked my earthing on this side, my earthings were good on this side, the light didn't go out, I then went to this side of the starter solenoid. Um, obviously the live goes to this side so I left the live connected because obviously taking the live off the light went out but that's nothing to do with the power drain but when I took this connector off um, my light went out so I reconnected it and pulled these two absolutely no different the light didn't go out so I determined that it was something to do with one of these two wires here that go into this loom so I kind of followed the loom round and up and it's this big mess of wires going along here and I was looking at anything along here that interrupted any of those cables and right just here there's relay. So I thought okay anything along here I'm going to pull, the, pull off and look at. So I pulled this relay and the terminals on it were pretty cruddy so I cleaned this relay up and I put the relay back in and lo and behold, after cleaning that relay and replacing it, um, it stopped my parasitic power drain. Now, I, like I said earlier, I'm not an expert on these Jeeps. I've kind of looked at what that relay does and I'm pretty sure it's something to do with idle control and um, manifold heat into the carburetor. The best, best I can find out, it's something like that. 
Um, but what it's done, number one, it's stopped my parasitic power drain, and number two, my Jeep is now ticking over completely perfectly. It is running a dream. I have absolutely no idle problems. It's starting more or less first go on the key and the engine is running smoothly. So what I'm saying here is if anybody has the original car to carb and you have done the cleaning and your vehicle is still not running 100% right, take a look at that relay, pull it off, make sure it's working. I believe you can test them. I think they're only maybe 10 pounds to buy, seven, 10 pounds, something like that. It may be worth changing that relay because that has something to do with your idle control on your carburetor and it has been a godsend to me to get this working properly. Um, my next issue is now the vehicle is actually running properly is I want to get rid of all those vacuum pipes on there. I am going to do the Nutter Bypass. So I know how to do the electrical part of the Nutter Bypass, I've done my research, I can find lots of information on that, but what I don't know is what do I need to do with all those vacuum hoses. So if anybody out there can give me any information on what to do with those vacuum hoses, I would be really, really appreciative. Just leave some comments or send me an email or something so I can get in touch with you. And equally, if there's anybody in the Hertfordshire area in England that has a strobe light because when I do my nutter pie pass I need to reset my timing and I don't own a strobe. Um, it's the only thing I'm going to do with a strobe so I don't really want to go and buy one for half an hour's work resetting my timing. I'd love it if there's anybody locally that has a Jeep that wouldn't mind giving me a bit of their time and perhaps come over and bring their strobe and help me set the timing. Um, I think I can do it myself um, but I don't have a strobe light. So hopefully that was helpful for somebody that's got an idle problem and that their Jeep is not quite running properly. Um, mine is a 1985, uh, it's a, oh you probably saw it, it's the 4.2. Uh, this is a California import into the UK, so the vacuum system on here and the emissions is probably way worse than a lot of people's. Um, and I think once I've done the Nutter Bypass, I can probably take out the actual computer system and lose all of it except a couple of those pipes that control the advance and return and the four-wheel drive. Um, but I'm not sure, I need some help on that. Anyway, all the best to everybody out there. All the best and bye for now.